Next up, we have the next person who um, was the uh, other instrument in uh, creating Occupy Venice, and uh, he's got a few wise words to share with us. It's uh, Matthew Schultkrit. I believe I said that. start, uh, quite frankly, because I'm still experiencing some trauma from the other night. Um, wherever anybody was, uh, whoever was with me, or with us, uh, we experienced something I'm sure none of us has ever experienced before, and that was basically being uh, assaulted uh, for peacefully gathering and using our First Amendment right to speak freely. And as a Jew living in this country, I'm very sensitive to issues of control domination. During the beginning of the German occupation in Germany, there was a pastor named Pastor Martin Niemöller, and he lived from 1892 to 1984. And he said, first they came for the communists, and did I not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came out for the trade unionists, and then I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. There's a lot of people in our lives. We know this because of Facebook, because of MySpace, because of Friendster, because of our emails, because of our address books, because of all the things that connect us to one another. We understand our connections. These connections are identical to how mushrooms grow. You're walking down the sidewalk and you see a random mushroom. That mushroom is connected to a whole network of other mushrooms. Through millions of miles of network connections, those mushrooms communicate. And Occupy Venice started, we started strong. We had working groups, we were meeting, we were sleeping in Woodward Circle, and we were dealing with a lot of community issues, from the homeless, to gangsters, to getting choked, to dealing with crazy people at our GAs. And then, it started to get more serious. We started seeing other Occupy communities being harassed by the police. And we in Occupy Venice didn't really have to deal with that yet because we had negotiated with the police. So we kept on supporting Occupy LA, and things kept on building, and building, and building. And the other night, we experienced what we'd hoped we'd never experience, which was our First Amendment rights being stripped from us. These are serious times, and serious times call for serious measures. We don't have a privilege anymore to wake up out of bed and do our normal routine. It's not 1992, it's not 1995, it's not Y2K, it's not blame it on Bush anymore, or hope for Obama. It's get off your own ass and do something in your community. Yeah. 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 Occupy your family. Engage in the difficult discussion. Occupy yourself. Do the spiritual work that's needed. It takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. People spend decades going inside themselves. Do the work. Share with us your work. Ask for help while you're doing your work. Communicate how you feel. These are all issues that the people who control this society don't want us to do. And we all know what they want us to do because most of us grew up in that society, watching the TV nonstop, eating microwave bags of popcorn, eating meat unconsciously, consuming power, consuming water, consuming relationships and love, with no regard to the resource of energy, with no regard to anything else except for independent consumption and lifestyle of happiness and entertainment. That's why we've been consuming. And it doesn't start with you joining an occupation movement. It starts when you take your first shit of the day. 
It does. Because that shit is when you release all the negativity you have inside of you, both physically and mentally. And it's up to you to do it every day. Every day. Unless you're constipated. And you're usually constipated from eating food that you should have not eaten. Like steak and cheese. Right. Steak and cheese, which are both delicious. It's true. Everything that they give us is delicious because it's engineered that way. But you can re-engineer your mind. You can re-engineer the way you breathe and hold it in and release. You can engineer the way you touch people and communicate with people. This movement has been a lesson for me every day. From every day I slept in Windward Circle, to every conversation I had with people about my attitude, to every friend that let me stay on their couch, to my dogs who were patient with me, to my brother, my mother, who didn't really understand at first what I was doing. These are the lessons of our lives. And we are not on this planet to consume and entertain ourselves. You are each on this planet to learn more about your own identity. And that comes through community. And that's why you're all here tonight. And that's why Occupy Venice is still here. Because we continue to grow through community, through action, through your idea, your project. And through those actions, we create new networks, and new friends, and new feelings. And we vote with our money. And we stand with our brothers and our sisters when it's called for. My favorite poet is actually Paul Simon. And before I came tonight, I was listening to one of his songs. And part of one of his songs says, When speech becomes a crime, silence leads the spirit over the bridge of time. So all we have to do as a community is sit down, cross our legs, close our eyes, and be silent and breathe. Thank you.